I remember Google I.O. in 2016 when they announced their Daydream headset. Android and VR became a reality, and it looked like an exciting competitor to the Samsung Gear VR powered by Oculus. With first-party apps like Google Photos and YouTube, it was great for media consumption, and it also supported 3 off gaming. Google built a VR SDK that ended up getting deprecated in 2019 when they decided to kill Daydream. Fast forward to 2025. Finally! Google has come back to VR! Welcome Android XR. Google really got Samsung switching sides like KD. The big three of XR will now battle for the throne of the metaverse. In this video, we're going to test out the Android XR SDK along with the new XR emulator and build some XR samples. Like on Quest, we can build with Unity or use C++ and OpenXR. Additionally, we can always build in JavaScript with WebXR. But the most exciting new way to build XR apps is using the new Jetpack Compose XR library to create XR differentiated Android apps. Jetpack Compose is a modern declarative toolkit for creating Android UIs using the Kotlin programming language. You can now build XR apps just as easily as an Android app and deploy to the Android XR emulator to iterate quickly. In Compose XR, spatial panels can be positioned in 3D space. Apps can either share the home space with other apps or run in the full space with no space boundaries. For the XR SDK preview, Google only provided a very trivial sample app that demonstrates basic usage of Jetpack Compose XR. So we're going to build on that and add some more cool spatial features to show how to build an XR differentiated Android app. First in the main activities on create, the sample uses a set content block and initializes the UI with the Hello Android XR app composable function. The function initializes a layout with three content blocks using either the full space spatial layout or a condensed non-spatial layout for the shared home space. The content blocks are just simple text panes in the sample. In the emulator, we can use controls on the right bar to move in orientation or move positionally. We can also hold alt and drag the mouse to change orientation. If you hover on the corner of a window, you'll be able to resize the window. When you hit the expand button in the top right corner, the layout will switch to the full space spatial layout. You can also use the WASD Doom style keyboard controls to move around positionally in the scene. Android apps can be augmented with spatial panels, 3D models, spatial environments, as well as spatial media. In our first challenge, let's try making a grid of images out of spatial panels. In our subspace, we'll create a spatial row with two spatial columns. Each column has three spatial panels. The spatial panels are composed of a box with an image loaded from the drawable folder and text layered on top of the image with a tint filter. So after deploying to the emulator, we can see the color tint, but it seems like the photos aren't showing up. Let's try disabling the color filter. Okay, there we go. Now we have our spatial grid of photos. You can imagine using spatial panels and orbiters to spatialize something like a 2D photo editing app. The next thing I wanted to try is getting a 3D scene loaded in a 360 environment. The ComposeXR library supports loading EXR environment images. The renderer uses image-based lighting to light the current 3D scene using the EXR image. I'm pretty sure it's using Google Filament C++ rendering library behind the scenes. I found a space HDR sphere map and converted it to EXR. In the orbiter, we can see where the environment switching action is implemented. The environment controllers load model asset asynchronously loads a GLTF file. For convenience, I added the ability to load an EXR file directly using the XR sessions create EXR image resource method. When the asset is loaded, we can then set the spatial environment preference to the skybox EXR image or the GLTF geometry. Then we can load our 3D GLTF scene in a volume in the home space. I hopped on Sketchfab and found a Saturn 3D model that we can use with the Space Environment EXR image. We create the GLTF resource asynchronously using the XR session. Then we can set the 3D pose and scale of the GLTF scene. Finally, if there's an animation, we can start the animation after loading. And just like that, we have our 3D model in our home space. Again, we can move around using the emulator's navigation controls. If we click the Environment button, we can enable the Space EXR background. Now Saturn is in space, so that was a static 3D model. Back on Sketchfab, I found a solar system scene that animates the orbit of planets. In the code, we use a model class to hold the model path, scale, and animation name. Let's switch our current model to the solar system. Now we have an animated 3D scene. And if we hit the environment button, we can use the space EXR background. VR development does not get any easier than that. I wanted to try one more scene. 
so I found a hoverbike model on Sketchfab and a Sky HDR image on Polyhaven. I switched the default model and environment path for the new assets. As you can see we have the bike doing its hover animation. Clicking the environment button switches to the sky environment, and you can see how the lighting of the hover bike changes with the new environment. Now we just need to set the camera position to be sitting in the driver's seat and we could easily build a VR game like this. The final thing I wanted to implement is spatial video support. Stereo video can be captured by recording both the left and right eye perspectives. Side-by-side -side stereo video files can be loaded and rendered in 3D on the headset. So I captured a stereo video of me playing Beat Saber on Quest. I created a Hello Spatial Video composable function to load the 3D video. In Prepare Spatial Video we create a stereo surface entity with the side-by-side -side stereo mode. We set the dimension and pose of the 3D screen, then we use ExoPlayer to load and decode the stereo video file. As you can see in the emulator, it will only play back the left eye video feed, but on the headset you would see the video in 3D. Currently there's no support for rendering 180 or 360 degree immersive videos in the preview Compose XR APIs. However, support is supposedly coming by the time the device launches later in 2025. We can of course still switch to our custom environment background. And there you have it, the easiest possible way to create XR apps for Android XR. This is going to empower millions of Android developers to take their talents to the metaverse in 2025. Let me know in the comments what I should build next for Android XR. And make sure you hit up that like button and subscribe for more great XR development content. Thanks for watching. Peace.